was born in the house of Allah. What is the wisdom? What is the hikmah? The hikmah and wisdom you can understand by finding out and thinking and pondering. Imam Ali was born to someone very he was he was married to someone very special. Imam Ali was married. Later on, he got married to who? Sayyida Fatima to Zahra. He got married to the most beloved daughter of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Almighty Allah subhanahu wa taala, He knew already this child Ali is going to be he was going to be born, and then he will later on get married with Fatima. Who is Fatima? Fatima is the queen of paradise. Fatima is the lady of Jannah. Allah. Fatima is that lady who among the five top ladies, most pious ladies in the history of mankind have ever existed. Fatima is that lady that Asiya, Hajra, Sarah, the, and Maryam, all of them will be in paradise even below Fatima because Fatima is the queen. They are not the queens. They are not the queen. Sarah alayhi salam is not the queen. Hajra alayhi salam, the mother of Ismail, is not the queen. Maryam, the mother of Isa alayhi salam, is not the queen. The queen of Jannah is only Fatima to Zahra, Fatima binti Muhammad, Fatima the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So this is why. Because now he, later on in life, would be married with Fatima. Fatima is not ordinary lady. She is that lady. About with the Prophet said, she is the queen of paradise. Allah. She is the one who has the blood of the Prophet in her. She is the one who was directly up brought by the Prophet, trained by the Prophet ﷺ. From her mother Khadija to Zahra, Khadija to, Khadija to Zahra, up to the Prophet ﷺ. They were the ones who were bringing her up. So she was a lady unlike any other lady. She was unique in her being, in her existence. She was unlike any other lady the, face, the surface of the earth has ever seen. The Almighty Allah had decided she will get married to someone who is Ali. When you look, get married, when you get your children married, one of the asul, one of the zawabit, one of the zabita, qanun, one of the rules is of getting your children married or people when they get married, one of the rules of that marriage is if you want that marriage to be successful, then both the bride and the bridegroom have to have the same background. They should be either academically the same background. You can't have a PhD and then a primary who just did school primary, who just went to college maybe. You can't get them married. You get them married, it calls for an unsuccessful marriage. You get people from two different backgrounds, one extremely rich, one extremely poor, you get them married, the marriage is most probably not going to be successful. The same, not always, exceptions always exist. But at the same time, you have one person who, for example, is very knowledgeable. The other person is not knowledgeable. You get them married, it's not appropriate, it is not justice. Justice is that the bride and the bridegroom, they, have, they are this match of each other. They are each other's match. Match means that they are according to themselves, they are comparatively the same education, comparatively the same spiritual status, comparatively the same family background, comparatively the same background in terms of wealth. So then the marriage is most probably successful. This is a kanun which has been there all the time from the time of Adam salam until the time of today. Marriages which take place between a very wealthy and a very poor lady they are marriages which, which are totally lawful, permitted in Islam, but they are not recommended. Because if there is a very big change in background, what happens is the marriage is going to be most probably not so successful. It's going to create problems for the bride or the bridegroom later on, psychologically, socially or any other way. This is why Islam has given a guideline. Islam has given certain guidelines when you want to get married. Look at the ilm, for example. Look at the iman, for example. Look at the family background. The Prophet ﷺ said, when you get married with a person, with a, with a woman, look at the iman faith. Look at the family background. Look at their wealth. Because compare it with yourself. 
If there is no big difference, then that is fine. Now keep this rule in mind. And let us discuss and talk about Sayyida Fatima's marriage with Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Fatima is not an ordinary lady. She is the daughter of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She is going to be the queen of Jannah. For her to get married with someone, that person should have, he, he should have been a match against her. That person should be at least of the, the same level. Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for this marriage to be happened because this marriage, remember, this marriage of Ali and Fatima is not a marriage which was conducted because of the desire of Ali. Ali radiallahu anhu never, he never proposed for a marriage to Fatima or his fa her father. The Prophet sallallahu never himself proposed to Ali, Ali will you marry my daughter? No. The decision of this marriage was done by Almighty Allah himself. The decision of the marriage of Fatima to Zahra and Ali was not a decision made in this dunya. It was a decision made by Almighty Allah. This is why Jibreel alayhi salam, Gabriel came and Gabriel is the one who then gave the Prophet وسلم, the recommendation of getting Fatima and Ali together get married. The question is why is Ali now born in Kaaba? Because he was going to be the husband of Fatima. Fatima, when she gets married, she will leave the house of the Prophet. She will be superior. She will have superiority. So for a husband, if a husband feels inferiority, because the wife is more knowledgeable, the wife is more educated, the wife is more wealthier than him, he will be in an inferiority complex. And this later on in marriage can have devastating effects. Allah is the all wise. He is Hakim. He is the one who has, from whom wisdom is given. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that Fatima will leave the house of Rasulullah and she will have this great importance and significance. So it was important that the one who gets married with her also is of the same, at least the same importance. This is why Almighty Allah then he decided that when Fatima will leave the house of Muhammad, she will marry with that person who is none other than the person who is born in the house of Almighty Allah. He is born in the house of Allah, which means he represents Allah and he and Fatima represents Muhammad Here you have someone who represents Almighty Allah. Here you have someone who represents Muhammad And then this marriage took place. This is the hikmah, amazing wisdom. Tell me honestly, how many of you know about this? This, 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 how many of you in fact know that Ali was born in the Kaaba? You see, subhanAllah, very, almost nobody, almost 60, 70 people. And then, and then what to talk about the marriage? The marriage itself, very few people know about it. Let me ask you a very basic question. Fatima and Ali, may Allah be pleased with them both, got married. They had children. What are the names of these children? Imam Hassan, Imam Hussain, Mohsin, they say also Mohsin, they say, and Hazrat Zainab. Hazrat Imam Hassan Hussain were the two boys. She had another boy, according to one narration, who passed away, but the most authentic narration, she has two boys, who were very famous leaders in that time, Hassan and Imam Hussain. And these two sons of her, the Prophet said, Hassan al Hussein, Sayyida Shababi Ahl al Jannah. That Hassan and Hussein, when Fatima is the queen of paradise, what are her children? Sayyida Shababi Ahl al Jannah. They are the leaders of the people in Jannah. They are the leaders in Jannah in paradise. The Prophet وسلم, about Ali وكريم, said, Man ahabba Aliyan, faqad ahabbani. The person who loves Ali, he loves me. Man ahabbani, who loves me, faqad ahabba Allah, he loves Allah. Man abghada aliyan, the person who does not like Ali, faqad abghadani, he has not liked me, he dislikes me. And man abghadani, who dislikes me, faqad abghada Allah, he dislikes Almighty Allah. About Sayyidina Ali karam Allah ta'ala wajul kareem, the companions, I'm just telling you what the Prophet said about him, what the companions said about him. The companions, they say, 
they say if we wanted to see, we wanted to recognize the hypocrites, we could recognize the hypocrites by their disliking of Ali Karamallahu Ta'ala Bajhul Kareem. When we talk about Ali, they did not like it. We knew that these are hypocrites. And kunna na'riful mu'mineen bi hubbi aliyyin. And we would recognize the believers by when we mentioned Ali, the believers were those who were pleased and happy by listening about him. So this is how we found out whether a person is a believer or he is a hypocrite. This is Ali. Ali karamallahu ta'ala wajhul kareem is the person who, he is the son of the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hazrat Abu Talib. He is, the, he is the son of the uncle, paternal uncle of the Prophet and from the age of five, he was directly under the guidance, training of Rasulullah His birth was, happened 30 years after the event of Feel. Do you know the event of Feel? Ashabi Feel? What is that? Abraha and his elephants. Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka? Yes, how will feel? That particular incident happened in the Arabian Peninsula. Do you know when? What is significant in that year when this event happened, incident happened? MashaAllah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.